Hey guys, we are back. Sorry for the delay, but we wanted to allow people who were playing to be able to pick up their BlizzCon tickets as they just went on sale at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So congrats to you guys who have picked up your tickets, but we are ready to move on to game two of this best of three between Throw Academy and Kappa Wolves. And I'm joined by Anna, my co-caster. Hi, Anna. Hi, friend. Excited Hi, friend. to go to BlizzCon? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are already in this draft, and actually we saw a first band Zagara again, because we're on Cursed Hollow. Ooh, goodness, and also a band from Jaina as well, so two very standard kind of new bands that we've been seeing more recently coming out, and Kappa Wolves are going to pick up the Sylvanas, so they are wanting the Banshee Queen for this game. Interesting. Yeah, they had Jaina last game, if I'm not mistaken. I think, yeah, and uh, now going for Sylvanas. And it looks like Thor Academy is going to respond. They want Rhaegar first pick again. They really like the Rhaegar. They do. He's such a strong support. And they may follow up with an Illidan here. A lot of times we see Rhaegar Illidan being picked together. But, of course, they'll definitely want something to be able to deal with the Sylvanas. Sylvanas is great on this map because her hero trait is basically a smaller a smaller curse from mm -hmm. the curse keeper what's his name but raven, raven lord. lord yeah it's basically a smaller curse and so they in effect have a, a little bit of a curse going on the entire time but instead throw academy is choosing to pick up Rhaegar and diablo so they want to get their their core out of the way before they start bringing in any damage or anything like that so they're going to pick up their primary support and tank here Interesting. And so, effectively, in a lot of ways, that can signpost to us that Kappa Wolves will probably end up with ETC if they stay within, like, the most established meta. So, interesting to say, okay, if Throw Academy is predicting that they're forcing an ETC pickup, what are they trying to do with the rest of their comp? And then what is Kappa Wolves going to do to try to derail what they're trying to force them to do? What do you think we're going to see pick next for Kappa Wolves? Well, I'm thinking that... They're probably feeling really safe when it comes to tanks. We did see a team pick up both Diablo and ETC and sort of deny tanks from a team, but generally we don't see that, and so they're probably feeling really safe in there. My guess is that if they're really wanting Tyrande at this point, this would be the time to grab it, because often we see Tyrande with the Diablo, and I'm guessing that... If that's where Thru Academy is going, they will be picking her up next. And so if that's something Kappa Wolves wants, they will definitely need to grab that. Maybe going into a little bit of damage here, trying to figure out... Thru Academy really hasn't given anything away, other than the fact that obviously they like to play Lost Vikings. And there we go, we do see Toronto, so Kappa Wolves has decided that they don't want to let Thru Academy have that really good combo of the Overpower into the Lunar Flare. Mm. Yeah, good call on that one. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, she's she's been so strong lately. A lot of people have been picking up Taronda. They really like her, and she's another one of those heroes that can really turn the tide. She's not she's not really any sort of she's not really a support. She's not really an assassin. She does great damage and has heals, but she really brings a lot to the team in terms of her hunter's mark, a little bit of heals, an amazing stun that is a skill shot, but if you're good with it, is just is terrible to the other team. <laughs> it is very hard to hit. It has such a small area and does have a delay on it. Oh, and there's the ETC. So mm -hmm. interesting pick because, as you said, they... They kind of can feel safe with tanks. They can generally assume that Thor Academy is probably not going to pick up ETC. So they must be trying to kind of hide their hand. They don't want uh, Thor Academy to counterpick whatever it is they have in store. Right. So we'll see what Thor Academy does. Yeah, it could be as something as simple, too, as they know they're going to need a tank eventually. And they can pick up ETC here. They've already secured Taronda and Sylvanas. They're feeling a little bit comfortable in terms of pushing and, and damage. And so they can wait, sit back, and see what Throw Academy is going to do here, force Throw Academy's hand a little bit, because as we know, Throw Academy can do some crazy drafts like we saw from the last <laughs> game. Yeah, and, and it kind of gives them the opportunity to counterpick whatever happens from Throw Academy, because like you said, they know that there could be something up their sleeve, so they have those two picks to kind of deal with whatever Throw Academy is going to throw at them, if anything at all. Right now they have a, a 
you know, a very solid support in Rhaegar. They've got a tank in Diablo, and they're going to go for a very solid damage dealer in Vala. So totally a sensible pick there. Looks like we're probably going to be seeing either another half support or another damage dealer here. That would be the typical thing that we would look for. What do you think we're going to see in terms of which hero, Gilly? I think you're right on the money for either a half support or a damage dealer. If they're planning on going for a double damage, then I think we'll see that here. But if they want the Tassadar, I think they'll go ahead and pick it up so that they have the final pick before uh, that they can use to deal with whatever Kappa Wolves can be throwing their way. Mm -hmm. I think obviously these teams are taking their time, really respecting the the pick and the power that <laughs> that it can have in in through academy going ahead taking up their pocket pick you might say with grabbing the lost vikings here yeah interesting too because now cap wolves has the opportunity to deny them that half support if that is what they wanted but i don't think through academy is probably too concerned about that because we've seen over and over that Rhaegar has been proved one of the supports that is most comfortable being the sole support especially with that ancestral healing it can bring someone back from basically the dead and his mobility and kind of overall utility makes him capable of supporting a whole team by himself better than other supports so i bet through academy kind of thought okay we can we can take this moment to to let them decide whether we take Tassadar or not. Doesn't matter to us. Capital Wolves going to actually bring on their full healing support in Brightwing. What do you think of that pick, Gilly? I know you love Brightwing, but how do you think feel Fight like? Time! <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yes, yes <laughs> totally. That's exactly what I was looking for. I'm really excited. I love Brightwing. She's great on this map, too. Bribe is so great. And with the addition of Falstad, both of them have map global map presence, as does ETC if they, they take stage dive. So they're always going to be where they need to be, which is really, really great on this map. It's a bigger map. Something I did want to note about the Rhaegar, as far as you said, the soul healer, definitely spot on. Although, with Lost Vikings, it becomes a little more difficult mm -hmm. and mana intensive because you can't actually control where your chain heals go. They're just going to mm -hmm. chain off. And so it's possible some of those can be wasted on the Vikings instead of going to some of those key targets like Vala. So we'll have to see if he's able to keep everybody alive here, especially if they choose to go with a damage dealer here over having another support or even a half support in Tassadar. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm really excited to see Falstad Brightwing ETC, though. And even, I mean, Tyrande doesn't have that full mobility, but she has, you know, the owls that she can send all over the map to mm -hmm. get vision and kind of control over at least map knowledge. So there is so much that Kappa Wolves can do to control this map, which on Cursed Hollow, like you said, is going to be something that is huge huge for them. So their academy's really got to be thinking right now, how do we make sure that we are able to maintain control of the map without kind of the ability to jump all over it and see all over it all the time? With Lost Vikings, of course, they do have the fact that they can basically split one of their heroes in three. And oh, it looks like they may have timed out or... They had four Tychus. seconds left. I think they oh, okay. did take Tychus. But yeah, well, it was really close. It was sweating yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, so Tychus as a damage dealer added to the Throw Academy comp. So they're saying, you know what, that's fine. You can jump all over if you want, but we are going to blow your head up as soon as we find you. So, I don't know. I think it might work for them. I like the way these comps stack up. I think it's going to be really fun to see how they engage because I think that's going to be the key here is how the teams are positioned once they do get in a position to team fight or take objectives. Were you asking me a question? I'm sorry, I was helping an admin out. <laughs> nope. Oh, okay, no good. No questions for you. Just <laughs> making a statement. I'm just saying basically how excited I am to see how these guys match up and how I think that the manner in which they engage with each other is going to be the key here because these mm -hmm. drafts both have strengths and weaknesses that we can see. And that's what I really love to see is a draft that has uh, strengths and weaknesses that can be exploited and then watching how the teams execute that on the map because I think one of my favorite things about heroes is the fact that the maps are different that they have different objectives and different strategies that you need to um, to engage with or to create and I think that as the game continues to develop I hope that that becomes more and more prominent where we would say oh on Cur um, on Cursed Hollow there are even more things that you need to keep in mind even more heroes that you 
that can be more robust on these maps. So I like to see this where we're really going to learn what these teams uh, have in mind for mm -hmm. how they're going to engage together. Chat already talking about how Capital Wolves have picked two of my favorites in Falstad and Brightwing. Man, if they had a Tyrael, <laughs> if they had a Tyrael, I just don't know what I would do. Yeah, you might have to just go take a little breathing break. Yeah, I think I would have a panic attack and, and, yeah. have, and have to let you solo cast the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for not picking Tyrael, Cap Wolves. I appreciate <laughs> that. I like having Gilly here with me as my co-caster. And uh, I don't know, what do you think is going to be most important to keep in mind for each of these teams as they start on this map, both in the early game and as they move toward the late game as curses start happening? So I think that with the Lost Vikings as before, Capital Wolves are going to have to make sure that throw, they're really watching the experience lead. Cap, their Throw Academy is probably going to keep them in lane and not really prioritize too much the first cur the first tributes. So it's possible that Kappa Wolves could capitalize that, capitalize on that. <laughs> so many Kappas. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and uh, go this is once they're ready. Uh, they could capitalize on that and maybe get an early curse and push with that. They do have a Sylvanas, so that's something that Throw Academy will have to watch too, you know. With with a Sylvanas, they're probably going to be pushing as heavily as they can. And that's not something that a lost Viking can deal with in terms of of, uh, of laning. Mm -hmm. Interesting to note that both teams have great capability to take a tribute that is not being highly contested, if that makes sense. So... If, for example, there's a team fight going on somewhere besides a tribute and the tribute spawns, both have really good opportunities to send someone who's not crucial to the team fight over to grab that either quickly and come back, or in the case of a Viking, you know, still be able to engage very well in a team fight, but send one of those little guys running over there, that kind of thing. So it'll be really interesting to see how that affects when teams feel like it's worth it to go for tributes and when it's not. Yeah, I agree. That's always something that I think a lot of people have issues with is trying to know when to give up a tribute and when and when to engage into one, especially as you get things like level disparities and of course when you are when you are up or down as well. So with that, let's go ahead and introduce our teams once again. Throw Academy is in the blue trunks with Sefthuko on those Lost Vikings. Kazus Requiem well, one fate is going to be on Rhaegar, one fate is going to be on Diablo. <laughs> Kazus is going to be on Vala this time, and Luda will be on the Tychus. And we have Hawk Fu for the Cap Wolves up here in the top lane on ETC. We also have Fam playing Falstad, big impact on Sylvanas. Where are you? AKA Face on Brightwing. And Psalm will be taking it up with Tyrande. So here we go, we're going to hop into this. Now Brightwing did choose to take Scouting Drone as her level 1 talent. A lot of people have been taking that more yet, but that does mean no bribe. And Fate taking a lot of damage here. Fom even going to barrel roll in to Whoa. secure the kill. And that's a really, really quick kill on a very tanky hero. I was going to say, choosing to engage on a Diablo at this point in the game, I would say like, oh guys, it's not worth it, but but in this case it was getting a very quick first blood on the Lord of Terror. Mm -hmm. Something to note is that those tanky heroes in the beginning are not super tanky, so if you're playing them, you're not as tanky as you think you are, and mm -hmm. already big impact taking down one Viking after another. Already Balog and Eric are down, and this is going to allow Sylvanas to push pretty much unscathed. There also is a fight down on bottom. This game is already nuts. <laughs> There's so much going on right away, and I think that uh, speaks to what we were saying about these teams both having strengths and weaknesses that they are eager to exploit. What do you think we're going to see from Fom on Falstad on this map particularly? Do you, well, I think, as with always, they'll get gathering power with level 4 talents, and so you'll be really looking, needing to watch his positioning. Falstad's one of those interesting ones where you can't be just completely far back because of how your lightning rod works, but you don't obviously want to be up close and personal either. All right, so Fate is going to throw Psalm back. They're going to try to take her down. She's getting very low. Tyrande will be the first one to die on the side of Kappa Wolves, and they are evening up a little bit in experience. But something I really wanted to note here is that 
I feel like Kappa Wolves had a really good idea of what Thor Academy was going to do in the beginning, which was having Vikings in each other lane and then a four hero mm. squad on one lane in particular happened to be this bottom one. But because Sylvanas has been so aggressive on those Vikings, as has ETC top, they aren't able to do that. They're losing out on experience because of this. Yeah, we do see the first tribute spawning up here near the top. Hakfu is standing in a bush waiting for it to uh, to spawn. Seftuko keeping a close eye up here as well. But it looks like probably not going to contest. It looks like Thor Academy is going to let Kappa Wolves just have this first tribute as they know that it will not result in a curse. They have plenty of time to engage on other tributes. Yeah, they really want to get caught up on experience. Maybe get a gank here. That would be amazing. Fate is back. So they've got the four-man squad here, and they are going to start pushing in on some of these towers. But here comes Som. Fate is going to shadow charge her. Not going to overpower her yet. And with, with Falstad leaving, he went back, but he has already flown back. That was a little bit of their defense here, especially as Akaface is low on both mana and health. And they're just trying to make a push happen here. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Sylvana is still here in the middle doing tons of damage. Sefthuko trying to uh, fend her off a little bit, but he's only got one little Viking there. Not going to engage too hard on Sylvana so she can do all sorts of damage to him. ETC holding it down in the top lane against one Viking, which is an interesting thing to note that one Viking can stand up here and be soaking experience alongside ETC. All right, so Fate is going to try to catch Sylvanas. She, oh, actually, a really clutch overpower stops her from teleporting to her Banshees, but mm. she wasn't actually able to get the kill on Fate, and nor was he able to get the kill on her. So they're both going to uh, just mutually leave Sylvanas actually going all the way back. They're trying to maybe just stall Hawkfu from picking up this tribute, but once again, Throw Academy are choosing to not get a tribute. They've taken down the gate. They are about to get this this tower as well, but they're still behind on experience. Yeah, I was going to note, I mean, like you said, what they're trying to do here is make sure that they maintain an experience lead using their Vikings and, and getting down structures. They are almost even now in experience, but you would expect them to be a little bit ahead in experience considering that they have given up the first two tributes and have that extra few bodies in the Vikings. I think they were really, really hoping that they could pick up a fort before the third tribute and then secure the third tribute. Luda actually getting really low and will die thanks to a good lightning rod from Fan. And I just don't think this was turning out the way they expected. Yeah, interesting. Now this third tribute is spawning. They are going to have to get that tribute if they want to deny a curse. A curse could be really instrumental in lengthening that uh, disparity between the two team levels. So we see Kazus Requiem and Fate charging in knowing they've got to do something at least to interrupt until the rest of their team can get there. They are going to just try to stall in actually Kappa Wolves not choosing to pick up the turret just yet. I wanted to note the amazing placement of those two scouting drones helped Kappa Wolves be able to see exactly where Throw Academy was coming in from. Now they are all here, they're throwing Som, but everybody else on the team was after Fom. Sorry, they threw Som. That's not confusing at all. <laughs> and now. Throw Academy is trying to pick this up, but here comes Brightwing, and it's four versus four still. ETC is up top. He is trying to just still attack. He's taken down towers, and and meanwhile, Psalm is getting really low. So is Fate. Who will be the first to die? I think it's going to be Fate. Psalm being able to get away, and now with the Banshee chase, Vala will go down as well. Luda is having to get away, but oh my gosh, the fly from mm -hmm. Fan, they're really trying to chase here. They're not going to be able to get anyone else, but they have secured their level 10 talents, and they're going to pick up this tribute. Man, there were a couple of times there where we saw that overpower coming down from Fate, and we expected to see the follow-up from the damage dealers Luda and Kazus Requiem, and it just didn't quite melt down the person they were going for, either because Fate as Diablo was too far out ahead of the rest of the team, or because there wasn't enough damage to be dealt. So I think that's something really interesting to keep in mind as we move forward in this game, that the burst is lacking so far. Man, it was weird. They waited a bit to pick it up, and Tychus was actually almost able to grenade Brightwing, but not quite able to. I think that Kappa Wolves just wanted to press their advantage a little bit and make sure that they had pushed the lanes before they picked up that tribute, not wasting any time of that curse. Now Falstad's flying in. Does drop the gust of wind, the mighty gust. Doesn't quite hit anybody, and <laughs> they're going to crack <laughs> up about it. That was a really hilarious mighty gust. But <laughs> since we have mighty gust and we've got heroics on both sides, let's talk about that as 
They are pushing, let's see, we've got Starfall, Mighty Gust, Blink Heal, Wailing Arrow, and Stage Dive for the Kappa Wolves, and Laser Drill and Strafe so far for Throw Academy. They're still trying to decide. I'm sure we'll see a boat. Yep, there's the Long Boat Raid. Probably Ancestral Heal. A Apocalypse for the Diablo. I see a lot of Laser Drill lately. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really interesting pick and can be really fun on especially Cursed Hollow where people really need to be in a certain area, can't really vacate the premises as easily. Right, you are. They've definitely picked it up, especially a lot versus Illidan play. Not on this map, but of course there are some clutch heroes that you can still take out very quickly with that. So Vanus is trying to get another fort down, but not quite so far being able to do so. And now her teammates are going to come in and try to capitalize this. Here comes the Brightwing. Wailing Arrow is going to silence both the boat but er, and fate. The boat taking a lot of damage here. It's actually going to go down very quickly, and now they're jumping away to safety as the rest of the team members come in here. There is so much damage that can be done on behalf of Kappa Wolves. Only one level ahead, but as you can see, Throw Academy being very careful how they engage. Fate jumping in, trying to get a little bit of a an engage going. Psalm melting down a little bit and is not going to be healed very quickly, but does seem to get away. Causes Requiem now looking to get damage, but goes down for it for being too greedy. It looks like the rest of Throw Academy will be get heading back behind that Draken laser drill. Wow. Psalm just barely, barely staying alive, and that really helped. And actually, they got their level 13 talents in the middle of that fight, and I have to wonder... We saw Tyrande pick up Overflowing Light. She did have Quickening Blessing before, so she is going for a build we don't often see, going for more, actually, Owls at the beginning and then switching over to the heels. So a lot more sustained, but I have to wonder if she was like, ah, I have to hurry, I'm about to die, I'm going <laughs> to pick up this healing talent. Mm, that could be. And I like, I like seeing how the game itself can impact talents. I think it's important that... Uh, that players can think about not only, oh, I know this is a good build, but this is a good build for right now, and see how they can use that. Um, well, how do you think that's going to affect her moving into the rest of the game? I think that she will, they won't have as much damage as they would with the Hunter's Mark, but they don't really seem to need it at this point. So I don't, I think that it's really good. They're just really wanting to make sure they can keep all of their heroes alive, and that the Sentinel is going to just help as far as I actually had to look at those talents, but going to help as well. Now, Thor Academy is going to allow Kappa Wolves to pick up this tribute, and here comes the stage dive. He's right on top of it, everybody, and there goes the false dad with the Brightwing. We're seeing exactly what they're trying to do here. Apocalypse goes down. They're trying to catch Kappa Wolves, but Seth Thuko and Faker Fate are going down so quickly. Diablo will be the first to go down. Now, they did take out ETC, and Diablo is on his way back, but they've got to get out of there. The Luda is so low, and he will be the next to drop. All of the the Vikings are low as well, one dropping. There goes Vala, and it's just Rhaegar and two Vikings left with Fate coming back in saying, Hey, where did everybody go? <laughs> hey, wait, where are my friends? <laughs> I mean, if I'm not mistaken, there haven't been any Throw Academy captured tributes yet, right? Correct. So... Really, momentum for Kappa Wolves is huge right now. They have Throw Academy exactly where they want them here in the top lane, have it pushed out so far, and the Tribute also spawning in that same direction. So they've really got all the space they need to take that next Tribute if they want it, and also the ability to, to ignore it if they want to, because it will not result in a curse. They already have another Tribute up, and it would only tie them for Tributes. Yeah, I mean, they really, Thor Academy needs to get back into the experience game. They've just picked up their level 13 talents, and Kappa Wolves is about to get to 16. If they were going to engage in a team fight, they would want to do so before they're down another tier of talents, but they don't want to do that. They're going to go for this boss, but Kappa Wolves knows. Look at the pathing. They're on their way. Thor Academy is going to try to take down this as quickly as possible, but they are not going to have it before here comes Kappa Wolves actually trying to steal the boss. <gasps> ah, the ETC Falstad Brightwing combination goes in, but, oh, and they take out Vala so fast. Hakfu also getting kind of low, but they, eh, maybe an APOC actually getting thrown outside of the APOC, but doesn't matter. They've taken out ETC now, but Rhaegar is, is after fam. They might have over, over jumped a little bit. Nope, they're going to be able to kill Rhaegar, <laughs> and I misspoke. They were able to kill three people for the price of one ETC. 
Their academy did get the boss, but more importantly, Kappa Wolves are 16. Yeah, really interesting because like you, I saw that that dive and thought, you know what, this may have been an overextension from Kappa Wolves, but it wasn't. They were so strong with that level 16 eventually coming into play, like you said. Um, but it is worth noting that Throw Academy did get the boss, which is what they wanted out of this, because it gives them just some tiny measure of control, where Kappa Wolves is going to have to deal with that at a certain point. Oh yeah, very, very true. That might actually save them here, but instead, Kappa Wolves so far have chosen to push. They want to take out some of these Vikings, stop people who can defend here at this point, and that owl, we're seeing it deal <laughs> a ton of damage. They took Ranger, that level 16 ability that just makes it deal a ton of damage, and because they took Pierce, it stops air, it hits every single hero in its path. That was a lot of damage there, and that's something that they will be probably scared of for the rest of this game yeah and uh, i forgot what i was gonna say because i'm just so excited by this the boss is melted down in the bottom lane the blue team being through academy is cursed so they've really got to figure out how to get back in this game and take some advantages i think taking the boss was a good idea didn't pan out exactly as they wanted but there aren't a whole lot of options for them right now they have to do something to distract the kappa wolves split their attention from just pushing together on their uh, their wall. Now, taking out the bottom wall and turrets at the, at the same time, Hakfu and Fam taking the Bruiser camp on the Throw Academy side of the map. So this momentum is going to be hard to change in any direction, as we also see Kappa Wolves being in position to sandwich Throw Academy here in their own bottom lane, AKA Face getting low though, and Brightwing will go down. Will they take Som as well? This may be the turn that Throw Academy is looking for. Oh, they're trying so hard. The longboat raid was so close. Vala is still chasing that Taronda, but they're going to have to back up a little bit. They know that they could be over-engaging now. They're going to just consolidate a bit. They were getting separated, and they're going to turn their tide and go after Hakfu here as ETC. They did at least pick up that Brightwing. One more kill would give them 16, the level 16 talents, and it's going to be big impact. They're really trying to go after her. Even fam would be huge here, and they do wow. pick up the false out. That's gathering power stacks that are down. They have lost a couple of Vikings, so they're going to have to be careful. But they did already drop the longboat, so at least they've, they've used that. And awesome <gasps> Shadow Charge is going to help them take out the Taronda. And maybe they're still going for it. They still want to. They can still get them and they wow. do they pick up etc brightwing is going to teleport back in but brightwing and sylvanas will get away this time but this th that's it that is what they needed there they're back back up at least in the same talent here yeah interest oh and the overpower on aka face but being able to move right out of the way no big deal there and they are going to push up against this bottom lane doing some damage structures will give them lots of experience too thus shortening that experience lead on behalf of kappa wolves something they really needed right now, like you said. And interesting to note that they did get to a point, like you said, where they could be overextending. And what they did was push through, which I think was the right choice in this particular instance. If they had retreated and been a little bit more defensive, they wouldn't have gotten those kills that they needed so badly, and they wouldn't have had a chance to break the momentum of Kappa Wolves. They are in danger again now, but Fate getting the ancestral healing and turning to engage. Will the rest of the team be able to burst down enough? The apocalypse goes down. Oh, wow, that was not good for Throw Academy. Oh, no. That global map presence showing us how important it can be that you have your tank in the fight. The ETC dropping down dealt so much damage to people who were already low from trying to push in. They tried to push into that keep, maybe taking out some turrets, but I think they might have just stayed there just a little bit too long because they've lost a Vala and Tychus and now a Tribute as well. Oh man, this is not looking good for Throw Academy. I'm trying to think if I were their shot caller, what would I be telling my team to do? At this point, there's not a whole lot other than defending that is an option, although Sefthuko doing some pressure up here in the top lane, good idea, but it's not going to have much follow up. It's not something that Kappa Wolves is going to have to deal with. Yeah, and it looks like they may be heading together to try to get some vision and maybe follow up that push in the top lane, but Som knows they're coming. And like you said, that global map presence as well as awareness of what's going on on the map for Kappa Wolves is going to be hard to do anything about. All right, well, we've got another boss that it looks like people might be posturing around. Everyone so far is just picking up mercs, but Kappa Wolves are halfway to 20. So if Thor Academy is going to engage into here, they've got to be really careful. For one, they definitely want to try to catch somebody before 
they hit 20 because that is going to be a huge advantage in the favor of Kappa Wolves. They're getting a little bit separated though. I'm a little bit concerned for their academy. Diablo is all the way down at the bottom and everyone else is up at the top and they know it. They're going to try to catch back up but Diablo isn't there. That was weird. It was almost as though he went looking for the tribute or something like that. Maybe mm -hmm. disagreeing about whether they should be engaging or not. But a good choice to back off if you don't have Diablo in those front lines with this team composition. That would have been very dangerous to engage there and probably best that they didn't. They might be backing off trying to get room for the tribute, but it looks like they're just going to let the Kappa Wolves take it. They know oh. that that location is terrible to try to engage into. They know that it's not going to mean a curse and they know that Kappa Wolves have 20. So now, now they're on the back foot. They've got to get back to 20 before they can engage. Luckily, they don't have that far to go. It shouldn't be too hard for them to get to 20 before engaging again. It looks like they're going to go for their bruisers as well as their boss, which will give them a little bit of pushing power on the map and hopefully a little bit of time to breathe. Mm, but they're going for the boss, and what do we remember? What do we remember about how the Kappa Wolves engage in? They're not going to do it, actually, so it's okay. <laughs> I was so scared. <laughs> they, uh, they, it looked like they were trying for it, for, but were just a smidge too late in mm -hmm. terms of Kappa Wolves coming to interrupt that boss, which is quite lucky for Throw Academy, and they really hurried to take those two things right away, which I think was a very good call because they knew they only had a few moments to take advantage of. They've also got a boss pushing on behalf of Kappa Wolves in their top lane, so they're going to go address that as their opponents are addressing the boss in the bottom lane. So a little bit of balance happening on the map right now. Here's a little thing that I'm concerned about, though. Ca Throw Academy has hit 20, so we're on even footing as far as as talent. However, bo with both having a boss pushing, there is going to be a tribute spawn, and there it is. Throw Academy is maybe in a little, I'd say they're about even in terms of location, but because of how everyone can move in the global map presence of most of Kappa Wolves, they're going to have a better setup here. And Kappa Wolves are the ones who are one tribute away from another curse. So this is, Throw Academy is setting up. The Vikings are a little bit out of position. They're on the other side of these rocks. Here comes Hakfu. They want this tribute, and they're going to have to stop them. Man, both teams looking for exactly the right engagement here because this could be a game-turning thing. Fate really looking as the engager to be in just the right position to protect the team as well as control the fight. The stage dive from Hawk Fu going to change positioning and now Falstead going to the other side. They want to get a full surround on Throw Academy. The Draken Laser Drill going down trying to push people out. Aka Face looking like... Yep, gone. <laughs> <laughs> and Psalm also gone. Tyrande will fall. Big impact might be next. Seth Duco giving quite a chase. Fate also in wolf form. Going to jump on her. And Sylvanas will die. Wow. This is exactly what Throw Academy needed to protect themselves from a curse. Will Fom and Hakfu also go down. Where is the rest of Throw Academy? Looks like we will see just poor solitary Hakfu left here on this side of the map running away for his life. <laughs> Run away, Hakfu! I like that Throw Academy already started pushing. They're already taking down that fort really fast. B that wouldn't have given them a curse, obviously, but that does help them at least go straight to pushing. They know that they didn't ha need everybody there to pick up the tribute. They knew they had it, so they are going to be very aggressive here. They picked up the first keep. Even though they've been behind in structures this whole time, they're the ones who picked up the first keep. Now, they might be getting a little overly aggressive here. Fom's going to try to push them away. Oh, but Fate is trying to help them get a kill on Hawk through the strafe, dealing so much damage. They do take out wow. the ATC. Looks like they're going to keep trying to push onto this core. Tehran is going to be up in three. Fom and Akaface are both up, and uh, I'm so nervous, but there's, there's a long bow. Believing. They are. They've got to get out of that. Starfall is dealing a lot of damage. Only Fate, Fate, and Septuco is left. Only <gasps> one single rigger, but they do it. They take the core. Wow. Oh, the decision making there. So <laughs> impactful. Something that we can absolutely learn from. As we know, Gilly, you and I have talked about this so many times on Eye on the Storm, that a decision made together, even if it's a bad decision, is better than a delayed or no decision. And they made a decisive choice there to commit to burning down that core, knowing that it was going to be close, but thinking that they had those two green ticks enough to do it. And they were right. I mean, I, I will. I am fully on board on saying that I did not believe, <laughs> and I am sorry for that because they had that, but they it was down to a Rhaegar. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a game!
really, really proving, too, that there's no way in Heroes, there's so many examples of this where you see a team that seems to be behind, doesn't have momentum on their side, but very calmly waits for that one moment of advantage where they can correctly take it, take advantage of it. And they did. It was fantastic to watch and really interesting to think, too, about just kind of the the strength and synergy of what they had and being willing to trust in that though i don't know i don't know who knows if throw academy thought they were going to win that either gilly uh i don't know but what i can tell you is there are so many things that this game can show you about heroes of the storm like you were saying for one it's not over until it is over for two um the you only need one keep to be able to push into core. So mm -hmm. the mistakes that you make or the situations you get into in early game can totally be mitigated in the late game. You can totally come back from a lot of different things. And Throw Academy did come back. They came back from being cursed twice. They never had a curse. They had one tribute the entire game, but came back and were able to do that. That was awesome. Like you said, pointing out some things about Heroes 2, that there are so many ways to win a game. You can win by pushing, you can win by team fights, you can win by map mechanics, you can win by being in the right place at the right time. And so not feeling like you're so behind, because like you said, they got one tribute. That is the sole map mechanic on this map. <laughs> and it's easy to feel like, oh, we're so far behind, we're so far behind. But they just said, okay, that you know what? That means we're losing that side of the game. We need to win the other side, which apparently was an all-out team a team push mm -hmm. when they had the one moment to do it. I really wish I could go back. I want to go back and watch that last team fight again because it was so pivotal. I thought that they did such a good job of getting out of the stage dive. I almost feel like they kind of baited the stage dive and then you saw them move away instantly. So although ETC stage dove in, he wasn't quite in the correct position because they were able to move away. And in that instant, actually, Falstad flew over and pushed everybody away as well. So the this, this synergy that normally was working for them, because they, they both jumped over to the side and everyone else was m already moving to the side, it actually put both of them out of position a little bit. And Tychus did a great job of, of just kind of sitting there and zoning them, making sure they didn't pick up that tribute behind their backs, but while the rest of them just wrecked the back line, they took out Taronda, Brightwing, and Sylvanas, and then it was just poor Falstad and ETC left. <laughs> that, that team fight was awesome. The game was awesome, and that also means we have a game three. It's also one last thing that was I felt like was really interesting and kind of informed the decision to go for the core because a lot of times people are are looking for an indication of how do I know when I can push to win how do I know when I need to retreat and take other advantages because that team fight where Throw Academy was able to come out on top happened so late in the game the kill timers were much longer for mm -hmm. Kappa Wolves and there was still like about 10 or 15 seconds on any of those kill timers when we were really going, ah, can they do this? I don't know. And so they knew that they had just enough time to rush from that bottom lane where the tribute was spawning all the way to the core and do a lot of damage when they definitely wouldn't have been able to do that earlier on in the game. Something to keep in mind for Kappa Wolves too, as maybe earlier in the game that it wouldn't have been such a big deal to lose a team fight as they have so many other advantages over the map control and things mm -hmm. like that. But it was a huge blunder for them to lose a team fight and let their damage dealers be taken down at that really important moment on the map. Mm -hmm. I think they got really, really focused on getting that curse. They definitely could have won with that curse. And they focused so much on that last tribute, that which was in a tough position. We talked about those rock outcroppings, that it was definitely, mm -hmm. the positioning was in favor of Throw Academy, even with the global map presence that Kappa Wolves had. But yeah, I just, I, I'm really impressed here by both teams, and mm -hmm. I, I cannot wait to watch this game three. This is going to be awesome. Let's get right to it, Gilly. Yeah, actually, we're already being invited into lobby, so I oh. think we could probably just keep going here. Sure. Why All not? All right. I'm going to pull you in, and we're going to be on Dragonshire. Do you need a break, or are you good to just... I'm good. All right. I'm 